So uh, I think we're going to start without the, uh, the slides for now. Uh, hopefully the, the computer will get here in time. Uh, so a uh, small introduction. Uh, my name is Luca Fulkir. I'm a computer scientist from Udine. I work as a, as a system assistant administrator as, and uh, as an IT consultant, uh, and I specialize myself in, uh, in everything that's network security and uh, all, all of this around it. Let's see. Yep. See you. I think we have the computer without the, HD, the HDMI port. <laughs> last of the last chances. Does anybody here have a computer? <laughs> a laptop with the HDMI working. Is the MI working? So um, this talk is about a project of mine. I call it TIR. Uh, it's about a transport protocol whose only focus is to add uh, error correction to um, well, the goal is to add it to any protocol. Right now, it's focused on the TCP and UDP for obvious reasons. And we're getting there. Okay, finally. <laughs> we'll, I'll try to keep it short. So uh, again, this is a, a purely a transport protocol. It's about adding uh, error correction and forward error correction to um, any protocol. It's, uh, it doesn't add any kind of security, so you won't find any encryption, any authentication, and you'll see why in a while, in a, in a little while. Uh, this is also just a tech preview of something that I'm building. I thought I would managed to, to finish uh, at least a demo uh, for, uh, for this camp. Unfortunately, a couple of things happened and I didn't have enough time as I, as, enough time as I thought. So um, the first question is why would, we, why would we need it? I mean, um, we all know that uh, any protocol has some kind of uh, at least error detection inside. Uh, the, cl cl the classic checksums from uh, UDP, TCP, even, uh, um, even the IP or Ethernet layers. Uh, but the problem is that whenever one of these checks fails, 
uh, usually any an implementation of uh, uh, that you can find of your network stack will just throw the packet away, and you know what happens when uh, a packet gets dropped in TCP. It means that uh, your connection gets uh, uh, gets a lower bit rate, uh, and uh, and you have to start using the the common uh, HK mechanism to to ask the source to to send back that packet again. Um, also, uh, packet dropping is not something you usually see in uh, um, in uh, uh, while you're using your uh, your cables uh, when you're using the, the Ethernet connection. But it's something that is very very common in any kind of radio uh, communications. So be it a, a wireless bridge, just uh, your wireless connections, your uh, wi your uh, your cell phone and things like that. And last but not least, uh, um, I'm, I am also developing a bigger protocol which is actually all about security and authentication. It also included um, additional error correction that we'll, we'll see here, but uh, it's, uh, it's too big of a project. Uh, it's getting a lot of time to, to get it right. So I decided to take uh, one feature out, out of it so that it can be used um, earlier uh, uh, while while the rest of the development finishes, um, I have already mentioned uh, two things: error correction and forward error correction. Uh, the very simplified version is that error correction is the classic checks that you can uh, have in uh, uh, in any protocol. Uh, different protocols have different kind of error corrections, uh, but uh, especially the TCP UDP checksums are very limited. They can only uh, correct. They can only detect and uh, a small um, small subset of error that you can usually have, and uh, and detect and they can correct even less than that. Um, there are also always there are newer uh, algorithms that you can find it like uh, the Ritz the Ritz Solomon, which is very used uh, in your uh, uh, your own style uh, um, CD, for example. But for what, what we're going to focus on is uh, forward error correction, which, uh, um, well, Ritz Solomon is also a kind of forward error correction if used properly. Uh, but we're going to talk about uh, things like the Raptor Q algorithm, just a tiny bit. Uh, another example of a uh, fake algorithm is the Fulcrum, but it's um, um, it's much newer, and uh, there are a lot of patterns behind it, so uh, so we're not going to use that. Um, the problem of one of the problems of error corrections in the correct in the current uh, uh, network stack is that uh, you keep stacking them. So um, if you fail something at the Ethernet level, that maybe you could have corrected uh, after. Uh, after uh, you know, after you get to the TCP level or something, uh, you still have to throw away the whole packet, um, which is something that we we don't really want. Um, again, this is uh, an example of a library that that I developed that implements the Raptor Q algorithm, and uh, here you can see how uh, FAC usually works. Basically, you start with uh, you start by dividing the input in symbols, which can be really one symbol, one packet, for example. Um, you you build a block of symbols, and uh, you can decide uh, the size of the block, of course. And then uh, you just send uh, a certain number of symbols as just the way they are, no modification needed, and then you generate repair symbols. Uh, you can lose a certain number of uh, the source symbols, and the repair symbols will uh, um, well, being combined with the with the source symbols will uh, regenerate the original symbols back. Basically, instead of sending ten packets, you send I don't know fifteen packets, and then whatever packet you lose, as long as you have ten packets, you will get the original ten packets uh, back. Um, if you ever uh, if you've ever seen anything about error correction, you know you will probably recognize that this means that there are a lot of interdependence between the uh, there is a lot of interdependence between the uh, the repair symbols and the symbols, uh, which means that you will always end up uh, working with uh, matrix 
uh, matrix multiplications, Gaussian elimination, and all of the, th all of the things have uh, cubic complexity, which is kind of bad, but, uh, uh, but this is also dependent on the size of the block. Meaning, so it doesn't mean on the, uh, it doesn't depend on the amount of bytes you put in each packet, but on the number of packets that you put in a block. Um, Raptor Q is also a um, um, kind of a peculiar uh, algorithm because uh, um, the recording is not assured always, uh, even if you have the uh, the correct number of packets. But uh, um, but as you can see, the the probability is very high, and it gets higher for every for every additional repair symbols that you get. So, uh, with numbers, why do we need a recorrection? This is what happens with well. Uh, this is what happens with both delay and uh, um, added, uh, added packet loss to, an, to just a normal TCP connection. This was a 100 megabit uh, file transfer between uh, uh, one uh, the machine in the USA and one in the, uh, I think it was in Frankfurt. Um, basically, you get uh, the, the full link speed uh, without uh, any packet of any, any packet loss. Um, but this here is the delay, so uh, don't look at it much in the um, look, looking in this way. But you should look at the difference between the three of them. This is without packet loss, five percent packet loss, and ten percent packet loss. The maximum bandwidth that you can use is well, basically full bandwidth, uh, just uh, a bit over a, a megabit, uh, depending also on which uh, uh, TCP uh, congestion protocol you choose, connection, congestion algorithm you choose. And uh, with just 10% packet loss, you, you, don't give it, you don't even get to, um, uh, to a megabit. Um, this was actually a, um, a test done a, a year ago. Uh, you won't find the, the new BBR here, uh, but it's, it shouldn't be very dif different. This is what happens when you use uh, uh, something like uh, Raptor Q to, tra to transmit data instead. This is the same 100 megabit uh, file transfer. Uh, and even if you get to a 20% packet drop, you can still get up to uh, 25, almost 25 uh, megabit per second, which is a huge advantage uh, uh, if, you, if you just look at the, at the previous graphs. Um, so we want to build a tunnel that adds uh, our uh, forward error correction to any protocol. Uh, the first thing you do is you encapsulate things, like any VPN, like, uh, I don't know, OpenVPN or, uh, or the IPv6 brokers and, uh, and anything. Um, the drawback of this approach is that uh, both of your endpoints must support this protocol. And, then, uh, and that uh, you need to be sure that this is supported before you start the connection. So uh, if we choose this approach, basically we, we should just uh, um, do our handshake for, uh, for our tunnel before the connection we would have delay. Uh, it wouldn't it, it would be sure that we succeed. It, it would be a huge, uh, a huge problem for the end user. So what we do instead is um, we start as soon as the new connection happens, we just start forwarding packets uh, just exactly the way they are. Uh, no packet modification, no encapsulation, absolutely nothing. Uh, this lets us uh, avoid any kind of delay. Then, uh, at the same time, we start uh, doing an, a parallel handshake the, uh, with the other endpoint. Of course, there are a lot of problems here between NATs and uh, um, not tunneling, far walking, etc. But basic idea is to try to establish a, a tunnel after the connection has already been established, and then once we have the tunnel and we have, and we have uh, we are sure that we want um, tunnel that kind of connection, that exact that connection, we we hijack that connection and we we send it through the tunnel. Uh, this also means that we have, a, a, for example, a moment where we can receive packets for that connection, both from the tunnel and uh, from the from the normal, net normal network. Um, yeah, the, the obvious uh, uh, advantage of this is that 
you have no initial delay for the connection, and then uh, um, you can use the tunnel even if the, you can keep using uh, the tunnel even if uh, the other endpoint does not support it. So it's a bit more like an end-to-end peer-to-peer -end, uh, -peer tunnel if you want. Um, this means, however, as I said before, there are pro problems with NATs. Uh, not just in, uh, because we have to walk through, through firewalls and uh, source and uh, destination modification in both uh, the IP addresses and the uh, TCP and UDP source and destination ports. Um, but yeah, but um, the problem is that we cannot uh, uh, rely on any kind of information. Uh, uh, for the IP and destination, uh, from the IP source and destination and, 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 pro and, and ports uh, that we find in the protocol. This is because uh, uh, NATs change them. Uh, we don't know if we are behind the NAT. We don't know how many NATs are behind uh, the two, are between the two endpoints because we can have uh, our router, then uh, we could have a carrier grade NAT, we could have uh, a NAT uh, before the actual server. Um, and and even if, uh, even if, for example, just the server didn't have uh, uh, a NAT, uh, there are uh, also these nice things called the port forwarding, which, uh, uh, which breaks any kind of assumption that you can make in making the connection. So the only thing you can have to identify a connection is basically the data inside the connection. Um, and the only way to... Uh, to check if uh, what uh, one way what uh, the client is sending and the server is uh, receiving are the same is just uh, control the hash of uh, the data of uh, any packet that you receive. Uh, this means that there is, there is a bit of uh, overhead for the connection tracking. Um, also, um, and, uh, and that we have to pay attention to use a very fast uh, um, hashing uh, algorithm. For example, here. Um, this uh, this hash function was chosen because it's uh, uh, it's it is one of the the fastest I could find, and uh, much much faster than the common uh, SHA, even if uh, there is no crypto safety behind. But we don't need it because we're not using for authentication. We're using just to check uh, if uh, if we're seeing uh, the same packets. Um, Again, as you can imagine, uh, if you ever uh, uh, see, um, if you ever work with things like uh, the Quick Protocol, MinimalT, and other advanced protocols, this runs on UDP, uh, which uh, means that there is control flow, uh, but that, it, that is not needed because we, we just rely on the control flow of the protocol that we uh, that we are tunneling. And, um, and yeah, the dancing is just uh, two round trips to uh, to check if we have the uh, uh, if we have a connection. There is a sync cookie to avoid uh, sync floods uh, attacks. Uh, it's designed it's designed against amplification attacks. So basically, if you send um, the client always has to send more data than the uh, than the server answer. Uh, otherwise, uh, things like uh, the uh, the DNS amplification uh, attack happens, and uh, and you can use one server to to DDoS uh, someone else, and and basically you end up uh, sending ten bytes, and the uh, and the victim receives more than a hundred bytes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to cut a bit of things because we are short on time, but. Uh, basically, things are optimized for the TCP and UDP protocols. We stripped all ports and checksums. Even uh, um, even in the um, in the UDP uh, layer that we use to to tunnel our tier protocol, uh, we 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 do not use the checksum. We set it to zero, which is a way to say the uh, to the UDP uh, do not check the checksum because we will do it inside. Um, future uh, again. Future. This is a bit static now. Uh, just uh, we we had uh, about uh, five ten percent of error correction st statically uh, to any connection. Uh, the future direction is obviously to uh, start uh, making this uh, adaptive and to support uh, um, 
point-to-point -point tunnels, so basically more VPN-like. So you can use it uh, to, to protect, for example, just the, um, the, two, uh, the two ends of a wireless bridge or, uh, or any kind of connection where you expect uh, a lot of interference. Um, this is all C++ 17, all user space, uh, no, kernel, uh, um, no kernel code needed. Uh, developed uh, for Linux, uh, but it should be easy to port to any other operating system. The only thing that is uh, really system dependent here is the is the way you choose to uh, to read and to send packets. Basically, uh, I think we have to use uh, uh, both uh, uh, raw sockets and uh, the the common tune uh, driver that uh, OpenVPN uses, for example. Again, this is a tech preview, it's almost finished, but it needs a lot of testing, so I'll probably uh, put the code uh, on, uh, as open source uh, uh, in, the, in the following days, maybe just a couple of days to clean up uh, the, the things that, that remains to have a working demo. Uh, are we are on time? Are we are on yeah. oh, How much need? How much do we have? Three minutes. Okay, so. I cut a lot, but uh, uh, still finished on time. So thank you for uh, for the attention. Uh, you can find uh, all information on uh, um, on these web pages. And uh, are there any uh, questions, things that I might have uh, avoided to talk about due to time? No questions. Now that's it then. Thanks for the attention.